to make yourself known to the crew. Simple measures you can take to help protect yourself and your crew. We have already distributed a personal protection pack which contains hand sanitizer and an antibacterial wipe for your personal use in flight. To safely dispose of any personal protection equipment, please use the sealable disposable bag provided which will be collected by the crew during the flight. landed in Heathrow and now I need to figure out how to get to my flat and the route tells me that I need to tr change the train like the two three times which is such a hassle and I have luggage with me which makes me not want to take the train but the uber is just too expensive we are on the way to the flat and I'm really nervous because I don't know if like my things are there like they were or um, if someone stole I have this feeling that like someone burgled the place and also I'm really worried because my sister said she potentially left a banana on the counter and I'm really scared that there's some kind of bug infestation so let's see this is the moment of truth guys I'm really really worried okay everything seems fine Take my shoes off like the Asian person that I am. Check the kitchen first. There is a banana, but it's completely shriveled up. So that's fine. Nice, nice. Ah, London, London, London. We are here. My bedroom is as it was before, except it's got red, we've got red covers now because my sister changed them while I was away. I'm happy, I'm landed, I'm safe. I'm gonna call my parents first thing. It was a mess getting back. Like, let's just say it was a complete mess trying to get back to London. I almost wasn't able to board on the flight. So that was great. And then, oh my God, I have so many stories, but I'll go into that in a bit. <laughs> yeah, I just need to throw it away. So before I move back, I am so oily. I look like I, you could fry an egg on my face right now. But anyways, before I move back to Portugal, <laughs> I can't, I can't get over how oily I look. It's a glow, natural glow. Before I went back to Portugal, my sister was living in my flat because she was living in my flat. And look at how nice she left my clothes. Like honestly, ten out of ten, Tina. The only thing I'm worried about is. There is a little bit of mold here, which I'll, I'll have to deep clean the whole fridge, but everything was pretty much thrown away. We have some alcohol. You know, my sister's a uni student. Of course, she left a bunch of alcohol. I need to clean that. But I checked my food and my sister left because she lived here, right? She left a bunch of ramen. Actually, I think a lot of this ramen's mine because I probably left it here, but she has like a bunch of food in here. So I'm going to have ramen for dinner. So I'm basically going to take a quick shower. I'm going to eat. And then I'm gonna relax for a bit before I come back into the vlog But I have a lot of stories to tell you guys basically Yeah Alright guys, so I'm currently cooking my ramen And let me, as I do that, multitask And tell you guys the fiasco That it was trying to get here to London So if you fly back to London from Portugal The rules are that you have to do a test beforehand That is at least three, no, the, at most three days in advance um, before your flight and then you have to do a test when you arrive so I did a test beforehand a PCR test you can't just do one of those rapid kit tests you know the blood ones you have to do the one that go up your nose which is really painful by the way if you've not tried it it's disgusting it's really painful um, but it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was be. so my sisters all did it not my all my sisters so my I did the PCR test I went to the airport and for some reason I this is this is what happens when you don't read the terms and conditions properly right I did not know that I had to book my test in advance the one the one I do in London I did not know I had to book that in advance so I didn't actually book my test to do here and I assumed that I would just they would just let me do my test whenever I want to do my test when I arrive 
that's not the case if you don't know and you're coming from a yellow amber like country then you should like you should listen up because i i made this is why i made my mistake i didn't read properly so i did not book a pcr test on arrival and in the airport they were asking me for my form and i was like what form and they're like the form that proves that you booked your test and i was like wait a minute wait a, wait a minute let, let me just go get my form so i was literally on the side like trying to book this fucking test and i was just trying to like bluff my way out and be like oh yeah i booked it but i just can't find the form i'm trying to look for the pdf can i go into my emails so i just stood right like right next to her i wasn't kicked off like out of the boarding gates because i was like already in there so i just i snooped in and i was just like booking my test in the side but then all the tests that i saw were either like sold out or extremely extremely expensive like the ones that were like 160 pounds which is obviously extremely expensive already they were all sold out and there weren't any available slots for the day that i arrive so now i'm thinking i'm already in the boarding gate i've, I've passed the security woman that checks my passport all i have to do is like just you know like hide and I'll be able to sn snoop into the plane. So at that point, I'm already trying to think, should I just, you know, do this thing and like try to snoop into the plane without anyone noticing me and without having to book the test. But no, like I didn't actually do that. I was like, okay, she probably has an eye on me. So if I try to do this thing, I'll probably be kicked off the airport. I'll have to go back home, book another flight, which will cost me at least 200 pounds because now the flights are really expensive. I'll have to book another PCR test to do beforehand, which will cost me 75 euros. And then I'll have to book, you know, the test that I have to do when I get there, which will cost me, you know, so much money. And so I was like, let's just pay for this stupid test. So I did, I paid 240 pounds for the PCR test. And I, it was literally so stressful because I had to book the test and then I had to fill in the PLC form or something. I don't remember. It's like passenger something, something form. I, I had to fill in that form in a rush right after I booked my test because that's like, but showing them the form is the only way I can get through. So I buy this test in a rush. I just literally just buy it. I don't even check properly. So like 240 pounds off of my accounts, it might be wrong. I don't know, but you know, I just buy it in a rush. Um, and then I start filling out this form. As I'm filling out the form, it's asking me like, what's my name, what's my date of birth, etc. I'm just putting in all the details. And then when it comes to the test, it just asks me for my booking reference. And it also asks me for the COVID, like the testing center. So I put in the testing center, which is like 100 COVID clear or something like that. And I put in my booking reference. And then the woman comes across and she's like, oh, have you found your, your booking form? And I was like, yeah, 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 here it is. Like as soon as I finished it, I was like, here it is. All she does is literally look at the number and then she goes, okay, that looks about right. And then she asked me what testing center is it? I'm like, oh, 100 COVID clear. And she's like, okay, that's it. And then she lets me go through. So essentially she didn't even check anything. She didn't even check the number. I could have literally just Googled COVID testing centers or COVID testing labs and told her, yeah, COVID 100 clear. Um, and then I, I, would, I could have just made up any kind of number and she would have let me pass. So I felt so frustrated. I was like, did I just spend 240 pounds for nothing when I could have literally just told you the testing center as a, as a lie and you would have let me through. So I was really pissed off, right? And this is what really pisses me off is when I spend money and people don't check whether or not I spent that money. Like for example, when I get train tickets and then no one checks for my train ticket, I'm like, I just spent 20 pounds for nothing then. That, that annoys me. But anyways, I am glad that I did it because when I arrived in the UK, when I arrived at Heathrow, they asked me for that form and then they scanned the QR code. So, you know, I, the, the lesson of the day is read your terms and conditions properly, read the rules, the COVID rules properly. I almost did not get on the flight. That was stressful. And now I have my ramen. I finished my ramen and now I'm having the chips that they gave me in the um, plane. I didn't want to eat them on the plane because it didn't really seem very COVID safe to take off my mask and eat some crisps. Um, yeah, I'm eating them now as a dessert. And the ramen was actually really good. And as I predicted, I feel satiated, but not full full. I could have something else, but I don't have anything else to eat. But I know that if I had another packet of ramen, it would be too much. So now I just have like the crisps. A little longer than a few minutes later. And that's a clean fridge. And the clean fridge is the happy clouds. Now we have a nice and clean fridge. No more mold, nothing. And I'm putting in these bags. We've got shike for 
some reason. I don't know who the hell bought this. We have vodka. We have more vodka. I have something exciting to show you guys. So one of the things that arrived while I was in Portugal is actually my degree, my master's degree. This thing, ladies and gentlemen, cost me 30,000 pounds. This, whatever's in here, cost me 30,000 pounds. Let's just take that in, okay? A third of it was out of pocket, the other third was a loan, and the other third was a scholarship. But all in all, this, this whatever's in here costs 30,000 pounds basically. Like, that's, that's a pretty big deal, I would say. Okay, so this is really nice. It comes with a passport holder. It says London Business School on it, which I'm actually gonna use now. Where's, where's my passport? All right, so we've got the passport. Let's put it in here. This currently is just like a, you know, just got Portugal on it. Let's put it in here because we should, you know? This cost me 32,000, not 32,000, but part of, yeah, you get what I mean. Would you have guessed that this passport cover is made from the bark of a tree? A cork oak to be more specific. Cork leather is a tree-based alternative to animal leather. Okay, so it's made, out, it's made out of cork. I am very familiar with cork because I think Portugal is like the largest exporter of cork. So we have a lot of cork stores in Portugal. So the two go so, you know, hand in hand. Synergy. This is so cute. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just a pure coincidence because I think they sent the same passport holder to every single student. But I guess to me as a Portuguese student, it has a little bit more meaning. And now I have a nice passport holder. Oh, it's got London Business School on it. That's so cute. And now let's go into the actual main dish. The big moments. It's a it's an actual piece of paper. Is it just a piece of paper? Oh, it comes with a nice picture of the class. It comes with a picture of my MEM 2021 class. Now, I don't obviously know every single one of these people, but a lot of my best friends are here, which is really, really cute. And the background is so pretty as well. I love it. So I'll need to take a very good care of this. And then, my beautiful diploma. Finally! Finally!